Mm-hmm. How'd that feel? That felt great. <laughs> I should be dancing. <laughs> what you doing on the back of it? Do the baby shark dance on that? Oh yeah. no. <laughs> baby shark doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> My biggest issue is my shoulder, it doesn't feel like it moves right. Like it doesn't feel stable. Um, when I'm in the gym, it's hard to get my right pec to fire. Like it feels like my shoulder wants to constantly shift forward even when I'm trying to contract behind me. Okay. Um, lots of clicking and popping. Okay. Like moving it around, there's little pops, clicks, even right here in the collarbone. Okay. Um, and then my elbow, it's probably my biggest thing, is just it has a lot of pain through this underside. And it also clicks and pops quite a bit. Like, what, do you, what do you feel at the most right now? Um, on the inside? The clicking, yeah, it's gonna be right here on the bottom on okay. the inside. But um, my wrist, it's also extremely uncomfortable. I've had like a few boxer fractures, so I know if that affected that, and then that, and then that. I'm okay. not sure okay. what happened to cause it. Um, I was in a wreck on December 1st. It was a rear ending. I was just at a stoplight sitting there, had this hand and arm kind of locked out, and then I got thrown forward and I felt a click in my elbow. Okay. Um, and then ever since then, it's just been so flared up. Like I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay. I can't really crawl on my arms that well right now. So that's my biggest concern. So before the accident, you didn't notice any clicking in the elbow. Mm -hmm. the accident happens. Yeah. Notice I've always had a little bit of shoulder issues, just right. like I play quarterback. So a lot of wear and tear on this one arm. Gotcha. But it wasn't as nearly uncomfortable as it is now. And it was something that I could almost strength condition, just okay. like working the, the structure areas around it, help keep it stabilized. Okay. But then that wreck took place, and ever since then, it's just been extremely uncomfortable. It doesn't feel right when I use it. It okay. feels off. Okay. So the car accident specifically, do you, had, do you think you had your arm locked? I did. Okay. I did, yeah. I had it locked, and I was just sitting there, and I just got jammed forward. And so then, the car hit you from behind? Yep, hit me from behind at a dead stop. Gotcha. All right. Interesting. And so you, you didn't have, you didn't go to did you go to the hospital for that? Yeah, I did. So I went to the hospital. Um, I had I had eight herniated discs or seven. I had it was a few like three or four in the top and about like three in the lower spine. Okay. Um, I think it was just because I'm so tall in the way I was like seated. I like bent over, right. kind of like crunched. Right. Um, but I explained the elbow on the site. They looked at it. They're like, well, we didn't. They didn't X-ray. They didn't do an MRI. They're like, okay, we don't see any bone breaks. You're good. I think you're okay. And then I went to go get treated by a doctor, and he was, you know, he was concerned about it. He's like, let's get it looked at by our specialist. And when he looked at it, he's like, there, we see a bone spur in there, uh -huh. um, but it's nothing major. Like that's something we don't think we need to do. Right. But he's like, he also acknowledged that my elbow was more like rounded, right. like than the other one. Like it veers off a little. Right. And he's like, I don't know if that's causing the uncomfortability, but he didn't know, and he didn't just it. He was just like, we'll leave it as it is. If it gets worse, it gets worse. But then we'll look at it. But I hadn't had any good, like, I didn't have such a good time there. The treatment was like yeah. 10, five minute sessions. I was like, I'm not really getting anything out of this. <laughs> so. Right. But you feel like it's a repetitive click when you. Yeah, it, it's not even, it's not that much the clicking. It's like, if I try to contrast, like all the way, I feel like the it. tendons, yeah, it's, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what's going on in there. Okay. But. We'll, we'll, we'll so check, check out the soft tissue. If it's something, Bony, I mean, obviously they're seeing a bone spur. Yeah. You generally clicking can be a tendon rubbing over a bone if it's a repetitive one. And, and yeah. then obviously that little grinding sound in there sounds like a tendon rubbing over a bone. Yeah. Um, bones grow in adaptive fashion. So you've been playing sports for many years. The bones will get larger because you're going through stress when you're doing those sports, and then the bones adapt and get larger, just like muscles do. The shoulder, what are you feeling currently right now in the shoulder? It just feels kind of rounded forward. I always okay. feel kind of tight in this area, like the chest, the pec wants to pull it forward. I'm just gonna feel um, around a little yeah. bit for a second. And I've always like felt like it just won't sit back. Like in the scalpula sure. area, sure. it just doesn't want to sit. Right, okay. And when they how about, did- How about in here, any pain right there? No, no pain. You never had any pain? Mm-mm. Okay. Um, if I ever had any pain, it's kind of towards the back a little bit more. But they, they double checked with an MRI that they thought I had a rotator cuff tear. Right, uh -huh. And they're like, there's no tear. Um, they said there's a ton of swelling. They're like, the joint's just swollen, but we don't know why. We don't see any tears. Okay. So, 
again, uh, images you know can only so show so much, and it has to reach a certain criteria for a radiologist to to be able to diagnose you. For instance, even with disc injuries. I've seen disc injuries on MRI, and then the MRI report say no disc injury. I call the radiologist, and he, he looks at the same slide. He's like, yeah, I see what you're saying, it ha but it doesn't reach a certain threshold. I can't mm -hmm. diagnose it, even though you and I both know it already is a small one. Yeah. So the inflammation is obviously a tool your body uses to try to repair something. So something's got to be the swelling. Is yeah. your body trying to – it's been damaged. Your body's trying to repair it. Um, it will eventually – that swelling can actually lead to a rotator cuff tear because – you're pointing to an attachment. That right yeah. on the backside is the attachment where the tendon dives into the bone. So let's work on it and prevent it from getting worse. The fo more forward the shoulder goes, mm -hmm. the more this is held taut. And I think of like a rope. The rope is easier to cut when it's held taut. Yeah. If you make a rope loose, it's harder to cut. Yeah. So typically in life, we're spending more time forward than we are back. And so our shoulder gets more rounded forward and it yeah. stays there. One idea is to strengthen your rhomboid to sort of tug of war with the pec. I'm not certain if that's the best way to deal it. It's possible you can strengthen your rhomboids to pull your shoulder back. Mm -hmm. My intention in Golden Day is to sort of go through the pec and try to release this. Mm -hmm. Instead of strengthening the contralateral muscle, we'll just stretch the pec yeah. and then that'll draw the shoulder back. But you mentioned those disc injuries. Wow. Yeah. You know, the disc, I would, you know, everything in the arm and shoulder has some level of you know, other than the glenoid fossa, a lot of it can repair or replace, but the discs are like a non-regenerable structure. And so, you know, those injuries, the research says it takes about 10 to 15 years to even get a disc to bulge or herniate, meaning that you're 24, 24. Yeah. Yeah. so we had disc being injured back when you were 10, 12, that years, so and the yeah. discs were getting set up for now six months ago, hey, I have these, like, the cavity of tooth, it's funny, yeah. and now we're seeing it, but... Um, this is why I adjust children and you know, why do they adjust kids? Well, because we're doing preventative here. You know, I know you're coming in for arm and elbow and I'll check that out, but the discs in your spine are like, mm. you know, it's like gold. That's, yeah, that's the high value stuff. Head back for me. And on the air out. Deep breath in. Let your jaw relax open. And then just exhale. Deep breath in. Head back. Exhale. And then exhale for me. There we go. Good. Let's go other side for And me. exhale. There you go. Fine. Let's go face up for me. Beautiful. Atlas is pretty centered. Everything's a little, axis a little to the right. You like to sleep on your left side. Sure. <laughs> Mm -hmm. How'd that feel? That felt great. <laughs> Alright, here we go. There we go. Exhale. There we go. There we go. Nice. Alright. There we go. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, this got a pretty good knot right there. Feel that a little bit? Look, yeah. Right there it clicks. So there's a soft tissue knot in here that has to be I blame this on one of the, pick one of those. <laughs> pick one of the above. Uh-huh. And your head doesn't like to tilt to the right very much. So we're gonna force. Like because I was always looking left over my shoulder playing quarterback. Yeah. Constantly look to my left. It could be, could be, yeah. So it's a favoritism. And then and then perhaps even when you get injured, if your head if your head's turned left when you get hit, the right side of your neck is going to get injured because the left side is actually in a more stable position when your head's turned left. So when your head's turned to the right, it's like, you know, it's in a more compromised position. So it's going to, the ligaments are already under, like a fabric. Mm -hmm. That fabric's already held taut. The ligaments are held taut. And then they're going to tear more easily. Yeah, right there, you got it. There's a, feel like, oh, repetitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a tear in there. So if I'm feeling it in the neck, I'm definitely going to feel stuff in the shoulder and elbow. Mm -hmm. Different kind of lump. This is like a feels like it's like, I don't know how you describe it. It's a little <laughs> this, bit larger, but it's um it's more broad. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the other one on the right was more pinpoint. This is spans a little bit larger size. So there's a curve in your neck called a lordosis and 
the upper neck, if the upper neck was functioning properly, the disc injuries that they saw on the MRI CAT scan, you know, wouldn't mm -hmm. be there. The disc injuries happen because there's excess stress happening in certain areas and no stress happening in other areas. And what we're trying to do is restore what you used to have. You used to have the right alignment when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. You used to have the right mobility when you were a kid. Just it wasn't high value by a lot of doctors or chiropractors, and so we lose it. And now we're trying to bring it back to the way it's supposed to be. And the alignment of your spine determines, just like the alignment of your tires in your car, determine how your tires age. The alignment of your spine determines how the discs age. The discs are these like sort of like tread on your tire. They have a certain amount of rotations, a certain amount of life to them. And that's what I really highly value is we need to start teaching you how to restore these curves to your spine. This, the arm won't resolve itself if the lower neck's upset because the healing energy to your arm comes from the lower neck. So, Ed, I have disc injuries in my lower neck that coincide with where do those nerves go? Well, your elbow and your wrist. So, that makes sense. You know, I, a little suspicious. There's overlap there. It can be, you know, the area is not getting its instructions that it should be getting from the spine because there's interference. Or, no, Ed, there's just been, I've been repetitively injuring my elbow and now I got tendonitis or you know, bone spurs that are causing it difficult for the tendons to glide smoothly. So the original bone is pretty soft, right? And then when it gets spurred, it gets like little sandpaper and little hooks on it. Does that make sense? And now you get the mm -hmm. tendon gliding over those hooks. That'll rip up the tendon and cause what we call a tendonitis. And there we go. Okay. Just checking if there's any more. Mm -hmm. Jenna. There we go. Okay. I got you. This was the more broad one. It was kind of like right here when I was feeling it right there. I think this was the most similar analogy is just untangling hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if your kid's hair is tangled, you have to just take a comb and brush. Sure. You know, it's the most effective tool for untangling knots. There's internal blockages, internal tangles. The fibers are supposed to be mostly running up and down here, and so that's why we comb you know, up and down, that makes sense, instead of like this. Yeah. Right, so we're combing in the direction that the fibers run. I got you. And they kind of go around down like that direction. How does it feel compared to what you see? It's, honestly, I didn't know what to expect mm -hmm. on the feeling-wise. I mean, you can visualize it all day, but you don't know until you're there. It feels, it's actually really relaxing <laughs> it's it's nothing it's not like I'm ripping your skin no, off no 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 it's very yes yeah, it's, it's nice actually I have a Theragun and I kind of just like go crazy with that thing and dig into all sorts of knots so we got this SCM here on the side right there is a, some of this postural some of this is just you know we got it's like a car there's dents and dings and mm -hmm. collisions and This is the one that's a little higher up there on the right. There's the right there was what I was feeling. So obviously, if this area is all tight, then when you bend, you're going to bend down here. Do you get mm -hmm. the idea? Right. Yeah. This is all knotted and tangled. You're going to bend exclusively in the looser areas, and then so this area being knotted up overstresses the lower neck. Then the discs in here start to age and that's the most vital thing to stop. Yeah, my mom and dad both have bad discs on their back, so I was like, I'm not getting on that let's, train. Let's, let's not get on that train. Yeah, let's, I'm not getting on that train, I gotta fix this. <laughs> yeah, let's get it, let's get off. Here. So just any tightness in the pec, I want I want this to be, you know, no tangles in here either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little a little tangled here. The pec sort of dominates the upper torso. It, it, in terms of strength, the pec is always stronger than the rhomboids. I mean it's just <laughs> you bench press way more than you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's you always have to sort of be aware and conscious that there's going to be a tendency for the or an inclination for this to round. Mm -hmm. You understand that the pec's going to get tight. The pec 
pulls the shoulder forward. Does more work. Right, yeah. And and then that and life is inundated with forward work more than we, you know, arch back. You know, yeah. So we have to learn at a young age. 26 is when your skeleton fully ossifies. So, you know, we're two years pre just the cement. Time. Right, well, the, the cement <laughs> hardens. Right, the cement hardens and becomes much more difficult yeah. to change anything. And I'll check out the backside in a minute, but I just wanted to check all that. Yeah, well, one issue I was having too is I really struggle to get my right tricep to fire. Like when I'm doing lap or uh, pull downs, just doing tries and stuff. Yes. Yeah, my try on the right side, it's just everything circulating through that elbow feels so funky to me. And that's just since this accident. Yeah, that's since the mm -hmm. accident. Because the elbow wasn't really giving me, I, like I said, I've had a little bit of tightness in the shoulder over time. But the elbow is just the, like after that little click incident, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it glides right. But. When you have an injury, your body sort of does things in expectation that it's going to happen again. So your body has woken up every every day from the last six months expecting you to get into another car accident. Okay. So part of what I have to try to look through today is is that what is that what's happening? Are you still doing that kind of idea? Has your body been convinced that okay, maybe it's not going to happen again? Yeah. Or and if it is, then part of what's happening is that the body's that guarding is now causing dysfunction, right? So it's a great position to be in all tight, but then if you actually want to bend and move, things aren't going to function properly because your body's in what we call, you know, splint, you know, spasms, protection, fortification. And there's definitely some fortification in this tricep here. So if the, if the muscle's tight, the cable is more taut, and then there's less room for the cable to glide mm -hmm. in the channels that it's supposed to be sitting in. So to me, a lot of this right here is is the tendonitis. You'll eventually have tendonitis, and then, like I was saying earlier, it has to reach a certain level before everybody clues in and goes, "Oh, that's what it is." <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> well, hold on. It was the same thing a year ago when it was less symptomatic. It just wasn't as torn up as it is now. But the, 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 things are catching up. <laughs> right, nothing's changed. I'm serious. I'm serious. It's like. <laughs> Just saying, like I said, it was a disc injury I'd seen, and I looked at, talked to the guy, my radiologist. I'm like, "There's a disc injury on this MRI." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying, and I see it, but it's, it has to reach a certain level of growth <laughs> before he can even put it on a form, and that's based on just, I guess the, um, you know, the radiologist. They have like a, you know, an agreement that it has to be a certain threshold, like grade one kind of idea. It's got to reach grade one before it's diagnosable." Yeah. Um, Anyway, but he was like, yeah, it'll probably be diagnosable in six months. I'm like, oh. Well. Because <laughs> basically the MRI that I had said that the person wasn't injured. I'm like, oh, geez, thanks. Yeah. I'm like, I, the person's got numbness in their arms and they got nerve issues, but. Yeah, that's not cool. It's like with celiac, I have celiac, so it's like uh -huh. some things can be considered gluten-free because they have right. such little gluten there in them, but right. there's gluten in it. Right. And so well, I still get threshold. sick, so I'm like, why, why did you say this was gluten-free? This isn't cool. <laughs> 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 oh, it's below the threshold. Yeah. Really, really, we do that with trans fats. Like, yeah. I think trans fats have to have like a certain amount before it can be, like they'll say zero grams trans fats on things. They actually have trans fats, but they it's, mess with the serving size. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sneaky. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I'm sitting there I'm like, my stomach is really burning right now. And oh, I don't know no. why. Oh, no. I look at the gummies a little harder and I'm like, oh, made in a facility with wheat. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely something right there. That's where the usually it directly correlates with what you'll feel. You'll add uh, there's yeah, <laughs> something you're hitting it right now. <laughs> that's it. There's something I feel that's tender yeah. as you comb over it, and and then as it as we progress through this type of care, this entire thing feels like nothing. You'll be able to go through a whole visit and you go, it's a joke, <laughs> <laughs> and that's usually at the same time the symptoms are gone. That's a good thing. <laughs> There, that's the most all the labor and the labral tears happen because of the alignment. And you know, you're not a golfer, right? No, okay, good. I did golf for a little while, but mm -hmm. not, not, not consistent. I love talking to golfers, like, 
once you start, you can. It's gonna be hard to stop. I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure I can quit this any time. Yep. Oh. <laughs> I'll vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely some lactic acid. And just like I said, I'm seeing. Uh, some almost like plaque. You know, there's a little bit of plaque here, a little bit of plaque there. Is it? Mm -hmm. yeah, there's definitely some build up. Mm -hmm. But no broken bones through your hole, no clavicle breaks, no. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a testament that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're, I'm serious. That you're, you've got pretty good strength in your bones, or you've been careful enough, or been able to dodge. Yeah. <laughs> Avoid. <laughs> Avoid, right, right, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No ankle breaks, no. Yeah. I've had metatarsal breaks in my feet. Okay. Um, Just the toes. Okay. And then, I, like I said, I had the boxing fracture in my hand. Okay. Uh -huh. But that's, I mean, aside from that, that's my major breaks. When I was very little, like probably four or five, I would say. I mean, so it's a long time ago, but I did have a dislocation in my elbow uh -huh. in that one. <laughs> so I don't know if that's. Like you talked about from a child, Interesting. yeah, that caused anything. Hmm. How symptomatic is that? That's not too bad, but that's uh -huh. kind of. I'm pretty sure that's exactly where the bone spur is. It's. They said it was near where the funny bone tendon uh -huh. is right there. This is the epicondyle, so this is the epicondyle of the humerus. Mm -hmm. um, this is a high, this is medial epicondylitis. You know, all the what do you know, flexor muscles here attach here. Extensor muscles attach on the lateral epicondylitis. So the medial is your flexor muscles here. You know, any tightness of these muscles are going to pull on that attachment, the tendons dive through the bone. But I'm not feeling, I mean, usually most people jump. If I, if I that was, you know, mm -hmm. it was really inflamed. Yeah. So I'm trying to see if I'm still scanning here. That feels pretty tender right in there. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't like it. I mean, it's definitely not, doesn't feel right. Yeah, that's, yep. <laughs> Sort of see it coming out here. There's. I'm just stay right here because I can't really see around here. You're good. You're good. Yeah. That's coming out quickly. <laughs> What happens is the tendons get more and more frayed, and that's what you're hearing. You're hearing like a gristly, you know, like a sandpaper channel that's mm -hmm. got a sandpapered covered <laughs> tendon, mm -hmm. and they're both kind of grinding on. One grinding on. Right, I know this is probably going to be a little odd feeling. All the nerves around here. If it's, if it's a little nervy, let me know. If it's uncom too uncomfortable, then I'm trying to clean around the ulnar nerve in here.
should be dancing. <laughs> what you doing with the big big? Do the baby shark dance on that? Oh yeah. no! <laughs> baby shark doo doo. <laughs> There's, there's, there's explanations for that grinding. Yeah, you know, just like, there's nothing wrong. Like, yeah. soft. <laughs> well, nothing that they're going to be able to. Nobody's yeah. going to sit here and do this. clean. It doesn't really happen when I bend you, right? But when you bend it, go ahead. It's when uh -huh. it's when I turn this hand inward uh -huh. with this. It's I get that. Hold on, hold on. See if I. See if I'm trying to localize it. Uh huh. Go on, hold on. To go over here. Yeah. Alright. Right. We'll find it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm getting closer. It's underneath it's here. Hiding. It's hiding it's underneath there. here. Yeah. yeah. It's a tough pocket. It's sure. underneath. It's underneath. It's tucked up underneath there is mm -hmm. where the tendon is. Grinding. Yeah. It still feels a lot better. Yeah. I'm just trying to clean all that out. It feels a lot better. You see this large area right here? It's lifted up. This is flush. It's lifted up right here. So this is on your left side of your back. It's about I don't know, a quarter inch higher than your right, not a minimal. Mm -hmm. This usually puts extra stress on the opposite lower. So usually you know, this will be tight and then your opposite lower okay. will age at a faster rate. And there's really nothing wrong with your right side, but it's a an avoidance of your left or an abuse of the right. Gotcha. And we want to, part of this is moving some of the mechanical stress back to your left side. There. 
this being tight up here is what allowed your lower back to have those disc injuries and the alignment that you were in when you were playing football determine where the stresses were going. Yeah, I see these all the time, the lipomas. They're just blockages internally. It's not a coincidence that the left side of your back does that make sense? Is yeah. where it's locked up over here. Yeah. And that this, because this, how do you think this drains? This drains actually towards the midline. My main treatment for it is if we can learn to clean this out, at the very least it won't get any bigger. Yeah. It won't, nothing will be added to it. But it was, it was because of this restriction right up here that created an environment conducive for it to exist. And a lot of benefit just working all the tissue around it. You don't have to even work on it, you can just work around it. Like this actually feels doesn't feel too bad. See the abuse side already moves. It doesn't yeah. need to be doesn't need to be, be, be abused more. I mean there's a little restriction here, but it's like gee with a third or a quarter of the size of the left. So upper back tightness also puts stress on your lower neck, right? So the areas above and below your lower neck are what are the most responsible for those disc injuries. Does that make sense? Yeah. So remember when I did that first adjustment where I was sort of giving you a hug? Yeah. This area didn't really like me too much. Yeah, it didn't move. <laughs> it didn't, didn't, right. So we're going to go get, go at it again and see if we can get a little bit more mobility from this tight area. It's like a clean canvas that I get to draw on. <laughs> <laughs>
Mark over here, but it's about, I don't know, half the size. <laughs> yeah, <that's> definitely, <laughs> yeah, the left is really congested, and then there's definitely, like I said, there's, there's blockages over here. Well, we, what you'd see is, after a handful of visits, this would stop coming out on the right, and mm -hmm. then it would still be getting marks on the left. Yeah. And that would be, uh, when, when we get to a point where no marks come out, then we know we've sort of reached nirvana. And there we go, we made it. Take. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Like a tattoo, you might as well just get through it. Yeah, just keep going. <laughs> it's not gonna get any easier. No, it's not getting any better. You just gotta go. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. I used to plan on my left foot for throwing and for soccer because I was right footed. So there's so much planning with this left side uh -huh. and torquing with all my right. I wouldn't want to be kicked by this foot. Gee whiz. See, you jiu jitsu? Jeez. You don't need flippers. You're pretty good. <laughs> This one you busted? Which one did you bust? Uh, it wasn't that one. It was actually the middle one on this foot. Or the sorry, the middle second to the big tail. Hang on. Almost ten for ten. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it now. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched a fair of these videos. I think mine's gonna be ugly. Left side over there. That's where it's all. Oh, that's a, trying to drain through that. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, Deep breath in. Exhale. There we go. There we go. I got you. Breathe. All right. That's all I'm gonna do. Yeah. There we go. Good. Put your arms back down. Okay. Right there. Still. Some resistance in there, it just needs time to compress. Okay, good. Here we go. 
Everybody walks out of here. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what did I sign up for? Breathe. There you go. Let's breathe. There you go. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think we got them all. Take it right up there. Got to get your heels in there. On his on his left upper side is where we need it. Right there. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Very good. Woo. That was awesome. <laughs> God, my arm feels so much better coming up. Like just the push yeah. up felt like it moved with it. That was the biggest thing. It's just like simple mechanics just felt so chunky and, and just weird. It's their, 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 that cable has mm -hmm. to have lubricant. Yeah. And it's just dried up. And it's just it's like a stiff. <laughs> hair that's not get conditioned, yeah. you know? And this is where there's overlap. Like, like I said earlier, if the nerve was healthy, let me just show you real quick on this guy. So, you know, you mentioned you have disc injury and where do the nerves are most likely upset here mm -hmm. and where do they go? Travel straight down the Right to your elbow. Yeah. So there's overlap mm -hmm. and I have traumas to my elbows I had my arm was locked yeah injury to my elbow you know but I if something doesn't resolve after six weeks to me it's more this yeah I really do I think that, okay. the, that the neck is more of a culprit after the first six to eight weeks of healing during the acute phase and then a little bit a first phase of healing if it still persists you know let's try to clean that out a little bit but in terms of long-term care we want to get the neck arched so let's go the more vital structure is the disc health and i got told i have eight disc injuries yeah we got work to do yeah <laughs> <laughs> but my elbow i get it <laughs> but i got you got eight disc injuries and yeah. that can't be under so as long as well, Dr. Ed wasn't very serious with me about it. No, he was pretty serious. He said that we got to start getting, I mean, I hope I don't underplay that, that we want to, so how do we take care of the discs? We got to get your spine clean, get it all moving, start molding. And when you go back home, people looking for that curve. Mm -hmm. This guy in Sarasota says, arch my lower back and my neck. And that's what's going to get you to 100 or 80 or 90 years. And longevity is going to come from, so I wanted you to feel this. It's like, yes, there you go. So what this does is it helps to mold the arch back in your neck. I tilt your head a little bit to the left for me. Tilt your head. Oh, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> open up your ears a little bit. And just tilt your head a little right a little bit for me. Oh, sorry, left, sorry, left. Here we go. Mm -hmm.